And welcome to TI Now's coverage of Dell World 2015. We're here with Dermot O'Connell. He's general manager of Dell OEM Solutions, EMEA, and Dermot, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thanks for having us here at, uh, at Dell World 2015. I want to focus on two things in this interview. I want to focus on Dell's OE OEM Solutions ecosystem, but also Dell's IoT gateways. Let's start with the ecosystem. How has that grown over the last even year? Well, I think when we think about OEMs, what a lot of OEMs look for is a platform to run their particular product or service on. So that ends up with a lot of servers, maybe it's PCs, maybe it's workstations, that kind of stuff. When you look at what's going on now in our industry, the OEMs are extremely interested and there's a huge opportunity in IoT. And that means that we're looking at data analytics, we're looking at storage, we're looking at cloud. There's a whole plethora of technology. And the ecosystem that we've had to keep up with has been quite amazing actually, from networking, from all the way through to cloud-based solutions, looking at some of the assets we have in the data analytics field and data aggregation and data movement. So a lot more of our technology getting into the data set and how people are managing data is really what's happened over the last year, as opposed to maybe point solutions which we were used to dealing with with our OEMs. Dermot, let's talk a little bit more about the cloud. I want to talk about the relationship between the cloud and Dell's IoT gateways. What's that relationship and what's the functionality of the gateway? Right, so it's, it's very interesting because there's a lot of cloud technology that we all know, and in the commercial space, it's a little bit different to what we're used to in consumer. So if we start with consumer, you have phones and Fitbits and all these different technologies, they typically talk directly to the cloud. But there's one of those devices per user and that then goes to the cloud and that, that works well. But think about a building that every door, every, uh, you know, the air conditioning, there's lots and lots of temperature sensors, there's humidity sensors, there's lots of this stuff going on. Do you really want all that to go to the cloud? So the company paying for the bandwidth between the building and the cloud, if it is a building solution, for example, they're not going to want to pay all this money to say, the door's closed, the door's closed, the door's still closed, or the light is still on, the light is still on. Not a very good use of network bandwidth. So where the gateway comes in is it's a solution that sits between all the sensors in the building, and it kind of, it's almost like a spam filter between the building that is sending out all these alerts and the cloud so it can save a ton of money. The other thing it can do is, you don't necessarily want to connect to the cloud when there's a fire and see, hey cloud, what should I do? A much better way to do that would be that the gateway or device local to the building or to the solution that you're trying to build actually makes a decision immediately and says, open all the doors, turn off the air conditioning, do a set of predefined steps, put on a siren, tell, put, play, record a message, get out of the building. That kind of stuff is really something that you typically want to run uh, locally as opposed to remotely in a cloud service, you know, hundreds and thousands and miles away somewhere else. Now is that an example of more analytical power at the edge of the network, is that what yes, you're describing? It is. Yes it is. So I mean what you can do also, think about all those things saying uh, these devices or these sensors are sending some kind of data back to this if we have a gateway in this particular architecture. Well, uh, a lot of that data can sit there and we can use that data and start finding trends that we never thought about before, right? So we have an example of something we did actually, I'm, I'm uh, from Europe, I, I live in Ireland, and our guys in Ireland opened an IoT lab, and the employees in that building, they had just done something we thought was quite interesting. They put a beehive on the roof of the building. So for those people that know anything about bees, the bee population is actually decreasing, and this is a kind of a problem because we need them to pollinate food and do all kinds of things for our, for our planet and, and, and to make sure we all have enough to eat. Um, what happened was the team then looked at, when the IoT lab looked at this, they said, hang on, we could actually instrument that beehive. And now we have a beehive with cameras on it, with counters looking at bees, with weight, with temperature, with humidity. And we're hoping that, that just gathering that data and making that data available to scientists who understand bee what bees do and what they don't do and what they shouldn't do, one day may be able to figure out why is the bee population declining. Something like that is costing a relatively modest amount of money to put a solution like that together, and it's a great showcase for us. But it actually is doing something that I would say at a much higher purpose to hopefully solve that, that pretty serious problem. 
Now, this use case you just gave, is that, uh, is that partner on the floor tomorrow at Dell World? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we'd be able to show people. It's one of the demos that we're bringing around to show people what we're actually doing. Because I think it takes something a little bit maybe left of field, not your typical industrial type solution, but here's a problem. And that's what we're trying to, the message we're trying to get there with IoT, is that IoT can be used to solve a lot of the, what I would call automation type problems. Take something that's fairly mundane, take that problem away and automate it. But it can also be used to solve some of the more perplexing problems that we basically have as a, as a kind of a human race problem. Why is this happening or why is that happening? Stuff like, think about irrigation. If you're growing rice, which is a pretty important component of the food system in the world, well, to grow rice, you've got to flood rice fields. Now, flooding rice fields in a country that hasn't, doesn't have much water is a bit of a problem because they just don't have enough water to do that. So if we could use IoT to maybe be a little bit more prescriptive, taking things like weather forecasts and other things into consideration and say, well, it's going to rain tomorrow, so don't turn on the water because it'll be there tomorrow, it'll be fine. That kind of stuff, I think, can make a huge difference with IoT. Now, of course, you had a CTO uh, meeting uh, just earlier before this interview. Uh, what surprised you about the, uh, the meeting? What, what came up and what, what were these CTOs asking you uh, in this IoT space that you were surprised about? They were incredibly interested in how we could change the economics of building IoT solutions. So if you're building something like, or you're using something like a gateway in your product today, a gateway, typically, you would have to think about ordering thousands of gateways. You'd have to think about maybe a 12-week lead time for those to be built, because typically they're kind of custom IT solutions that are built for a specific purpose. When they look at what we have, our minimum order quantity is one gateway. We can send that gateway to anywhere in the world. It'll be supported by our support team. So the kind of things and the kind of experiments these CTOs could do without getting themselves into huge elongated contracts and vendor contracts and forecasting how big will it be, that's kind of been a big revelation for them and they're really, really excited about that. Now I know that you, uh, I don't know solely, but you were involved, very much involved in starting an IoT lab out in Limerick, That's Ireland, right. is that right? That's First, right. tell me a little bit about that, but also tell me, and I know that Dell has another lab, is that, is that right? That's right, over here in Santa Clara. Tell me about the importance of those labs. So the importance of the labs are that, you know, we have some people out there with great ideas to build something. But those people typically, if you're an expert in a vertical or in an area, then how can you be this kind of horizontal expert across all the technologies? So what we find is that using pieces of our technology and specifically some of the know-how that we have from our IT part of the house, typically these IoT solutions come from what we call the OT side of the house, the kind of operations technology. Think of big machines doing repetitive things like generating power or something like that. So when you take our IT capability in those labs, where we have, by the way, because there, there are solution centers, the IoT labs are a subset of these solution centers. So we have all the technology experts in storage, in networking, in data analytics, in systems management, in security. And when you put that kind of a, a I would say, a brain power together with someone who has a huge amount of experience in a vertical or a specific solution, we're able to build something really fast and get them to market a lot faster than they would maybe get themselves. Now you described earlier uh, two use cases uh, that we can see on the floor uh, in real life tomorrow um, that are utilizing uh, Dell's IoT solutions. Is there one more use case that you can give us that we would uh, be able to see tomorrow? Uh, there's so many. I mean, not necessarily here tomorrow, but one, um, we've seen it across agriculture. We've seen it across, for example, uh, one of our, our colleagues in APJ was telling us about a solution that a, a company there did. And what they did was they took one of our thin client devices, one of our very small PCs on a stick, and they used that to build a solution for HVAC systems. So if you think about a HVAC, on top of a roof of a building, pretty inaccessible, gets a lot of uh, environmental impact, has to put up with storms, has to put up with all kinds of things. And they engineered a solution where they could look very deeply inside that system and find anything that was going wrong before it ever went wrong. So they would notice that a motor was gone a little bit out of tolerance or the power was fluctuating a bit and they saved a ton of money because they didn't have to go and send engineers there to do half the maintenance. So anything in that kind of industrial space is something we can build uh, quite easily and quite 
cost effectively because sensors are now gone hugely down in cost, all those components you need. So it is really wide open to build any kind of solution with IoT. Dermot, one more question. You've been at Dell long enough to see a couple or even more than that technologies evolve and be adopted. Do you find that IoT, IoT technologies are being adopted and evolving much, much faster? Much, much faster. And I think also, you know, we were talking about storage and some other things, this move to flash from disk. Right now, technology is accelerating as opposed to slowing down. And I think what's also quite interesting for us is that that, that industrial, you know, that industrial stuff, this was millions of dollars. You can do this for a small number of thousands of dollars in a very simple uh, solution, and that can be built and prototyped in a way that could never be done before. So it's a, it's a pretty exciting time. Dermot, we'll see you on the floor tomorrow, and thanks for your time. Great, thank you, appreciate it.